Hi, how are you doing? Um, welcome to a brand new week. And I suppose really it's a brand new era, isn't it? Um, uh, with the Jubilee over, uh, it, it's actually a brand new era. So um, welcome back to White Gecko. It seems like ages since we've been here. Sorry about not doing this on Thursday, but um, I don't know if you saw the, the live. It was um, a bit chaotic, very chaotic. Every time we moved anything, bits more glass from, from the film shoot came out. But we have a beautiful big new window and they're coming this afternoon to put the graphics in. So we should be back to ship shape. We, um, we've moved things around. Um, added more shelves to give us more space um, so it, it's something that we'll have to take you on a walk around um, when we've uh, when we put things completely back to back to shape so we've been doing orders this morning um, and uh, it will be so you get your orders those that of you that have had to wait a, a week will get your orders out today this afternoon so that's us. That's the. Um, so I thought I would talk you through the little mini iron caddy. Okay. Um, it's it's a really easy, quick make, uh, and we now have the Luminex, the blue stuff that we used in the iron caddy. We've now got it for sale at half meters on the website. So if you need to, uh, if you want to do your own, then. Um, we can do it, but I thought I would take you through uh, all the bits, okay, on how to do it because sometimes when you look at a pattern, it can be a bit mind blowing. So we're going to do that. How is everybody? Hello, everyone. How are you all doing? Um, we've also had some of the um, some of the uh, the doodah what's it? What they called? The letters have started coming in and uh they're looking amazing absolutely amazing uh, it's going to be it's going to be a really cool quilt and we're still sending out fat quarters so uh those who are still waiting for your fat quarters they won't be long okay so right on to this now where are we uh hi rally how you doing um, we got your email. We're going to um, get that out and sorted as soon as possible. Right. Now, in the pattern, you get the pattern and the destructions and the um, photos. You also get two of these. Now, they, they, the one looks like it's upside down now because um, I didn't think about it when we were first doing it. I should have done a reverse one as well. Uh, maybe that would be something for a later date. But you've got these, and all you do is you butt them up together, better than I've done, butt them up together and join it so that you get this rectangle in the middle and all these lines going out, okay? Now, putting them together doesn't give you the 18 by 15, I think I want, yeah 18 by 15 it doesn't give you the complete but we're going to i'm going to show you how to go about doing that now i've marked to find the middle on my paper which is here and i've also marked in almost the same color as my my um doodah because the darker one uh has been left open and it's gone thing i've marked it so that I've got the center of this. So I'm going to put this pin through the center on my paper and then through the center on there. So I know that that is now the center. Okay. Now I can see the mark here. And I want this to be 5 by... This is why you should bring the whole pattern, Sarah Jane. Five by eight. Okay, so your triangle in the middle is five. Uh, rectangle in the middle is five by eight. So I'm going to put my um, four 
on the line and I want my two and a half on the line. So I'm going to go up my four line and find my two and a half, which would be there. And I'm going to come round and centre it off a little bit more. Are you all seeing this? Is everybody um, um, with me? I've lost my point now. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to go up to five and along to eight there. That looks about central, doesn't it? So we want this one to be on the five by eight line. Okay, like that. Going on the five by eight along there. I'm gonna it would be a lot better if I picked a different pen, I think. Like that. Okay, so that's all out. yeah. That's about right. Now you've got more that this blue stuff. They, I've got more than ne it needs, so um, I'm able to uh, uh, able to, to if it's not dead center, it'll be all right. Now, one of the things that Sarah did when she was showing you on the telly is she put it in the corner, so she put the needle in the corner so that it matched the corner there which I think was a brilliant idea just to sort it out. Okay, so that's there. And it's best not to pin it down because you'll, you'll leave marks in the, um, in the ironing stuff, which I don't think disappear. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our ruler. I want a smaller ruler, do we? We'll take our ruler and what I'm going to do is on these solid lines I'm going to take them out further now those of you on the that were on the um, what, what's it called that you were on the um, is that a fix on yeah um, you were on the quilt retreat I don't know whether you noticed the name of the iron because uh, I did it based on that. So we're just going to, um, as we were doing bingo, we um, the writing on the bingo cards was um, one of these um, fancy filigree writing and it looked like Tron, which is why we called it Tron. So I'm just going to complete these lines going out, okay? And then what you do is you work out your 18 by 15 rectangle and you'll be able to work it out from there. Now I think Sarah cut it off, cut, cut your... Um, your rectangle, um, she cut hers down to a 15, uh, 15 by 18. And it, um, to begin with, whereas I work from the whole bit. This is not a very good pen either. Sarah, you need new pens. Okay, so we're just taking these out. Okay. And we're going to have to hope that we can see them afterwards. I think we'll use a different pen afterwards. And we just, you just go all the way around and work out where your solid lines are. Because those are your sewing lines. Okay. So those are your sewing lines. So we're going to go out like that. And now I've got to hope that I did it in the right place. Now, can you see where the lines are vaguely? That's right. 
Okay, so we are now going to change the pen. I think the one that was the same colour was easier to see than the one that I've got. Now you can use a pencil because you're going to sew on that line. Um, I'm just using this. Um, yeah, none of them work. I don't know where the other one's gone now. Where did I put? Oh, there it is. So we're going to work out now your... You want it to be 15 by 18. Okay, so from the middle, 15 would be. So we've done two and a half. 15, half 15 is seven and a half. So we've done two and a half. That's two and a half. So you want five on top of that. Oh, of course, five by five by five. Sorry, it's been it's been a little while. Can't see anything. So I'm gonna measure that up there. So that's that, and then we're gonna go five. So this is a six inch. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six inch. So if I go one inch up that way am i are you all still with me there we go okay so i've gone eight that way there's eight in the middle and i want it to be 18 so i need to go five on either side of this as well well that's handy so there we go up like that This is really um, pants. Sorry, girls. Um, and a five up there. Like that. I think I'm going to have to draw it in in pencil because we want, um, I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Oh, sugar. Pencil doesn't work. Okay. So where I've done the lines, I want to bring them, they're going to go, they come down from the corner, okay, from the corner into the corner. So you're going to take it out there, so there's one line, okay. And then this line, we want this one to match up the corner of my square. And this was where I put the line from here. Okay, so that's where my lines are. So I'm going to come from that corner to there. All right, and the same with this one. So there's my line here. So I want my corner and I want to follow my line. up here okay and we're going to do that all the way around again so how was your weekend did you have a wonderful bank holiday weekend um we were terrible for our street we didn't have um we didn't have a street party um i was too busy and nobody else did it so um we didn't get round to it um which to me is a is a real shame because our our street is renowned for their parties and father christmas and things but um it's sort of lost it i mean we half the people we don't know anymore can you see all this we're going up here so there's my square in the middle because we're going to go round the square and we're just following the lines on the paper okay. so we go from the from the corner of my middle 
um, rectangle out to the corner of my other one and we're going up here okay all right so i'm just going to mark there so that i can see it when i'm sewing and there There and oh, there. So you can see now that my lines roughly follow on from all of these. Okay. And now all we're going to do is sandwich it all up and sew on the uh, on these lines. So I'm going to turn that face down like this. We're going to put a piece of wadding, and I've picked up the wrong size wadding. But that was very clever, wasn't it? Not. Um, it is padded, so you don't actually need wadding. Um, I'm going to probably, unless Sarah's got a piece that is big enough. There we are. We're going to pinch Sarah's. So let's cut that piece off there. I've left you another piece, Sarah. There, like that. And then we're going to take a fat quarter and lay the fat quarter right side up. All right. So you've made a sandwich like that. Now we're going to baste it. Just lightly baste it so that you know that it's pretty much going to stay together. Now, I would suggest that you don't use a directional fabric because it would end up upside down on one side. So you want a fabric that's pretty much um, non-directional. Okay. One half. And the other half. Okay. And I would clip it. If you want it you know, more secure, I would clip it. So that your... Um, Um, so it's holding in place without it being, um, without it moving, but without putting your pins in. Although you do have enough around it, the side. Now, if you decide to buy this, uh, uh, Luminex, which is on the website, um, you get half a metre. You can actually make three of these from half a metre. All right, okay, so I've stuck thingies in them, clips on them, and we're off to the try in the cupboard. Oh, it's done now, darling. Thank you. Um, we are going to go over to the sewing machine. So, you went to a street party it was damp and cold but no rain well that's good i mean it rained here so i'm glad we didn't have the street party but it just seemed like such a shame now i would say put your um uh put your stitch length up to um a three three and a half because you're going through quite some layers here um, you could put a jeans needle on if you wanted to, um, but you know, go from go with what your machine is like. Some machines need a lot more than others. Okay, so let me see. Let's put that over there so we don't burn myself for a start off. So I'm just going to follow these lines, and with all good quilting projects i'm going to start 
with the um, I'm going to start with a um, what's it called with the middle you're going to start in the middle okay so make sure your foot goes down and I'm going to hold on to my thread needle down needle up and I'm going to pull that through because I end up with knots and this can if you've got especially if you've got um, easy thread needles um, you know hand needles they're really easy to put back in there we go so we're gonna pull that back there we go because we don't want a, a bird's nest on the other side and we're just going to put the stitch length up and we're going to sew down here can you hear the the punching as it goes through that's all right, Carolyn, you're forgiven. I'm going to move off this stuff. I've got... I have no idea what she's got by here. There we go. So we're following it along. And all you're doing now is just sewing it all together. So, talk to me. Because there wasn't a lot I could prep for this. I wanted you to see how quick it was. I'm going to turn it. Now, as long as I don't go too fast, this is quite a nice stitch. And we're quilting as we go. You know what all that is about. So it's going through and it, it makes it easier to fold on the lines well we spent the best day of the weekend which was the Thursday um, weather wise we spent it in the shop building shelves and moving stuff around um, and putting the shop back together so we missed the best of the weather then Friday it was still warm in the morning so I sat out um, caught the sun lovely and then we went to a housewarming birthday party then on the Saturday afternoon which was very nice Got to see a lot of people that we haven't seen for a while there we go so we're going down put your foot down set and we're going down the last side and then I'm going to come off at an angle. I'm going to come off down at an angle to come off, which means that I've only got one length that needs to be secured then. So there we go. We come to there and I'm going to turn it and come off at the angle there but the things that I saw on the news about the Queen and, and everything seems really good um, that's all right it's um, you're not late I'm early well I'm late I suppose you're early for my Thursday session you're not late because you're not used to us being here on a Monday so all good. So we're going to go all the way down to the corner. We're going to cut these corners off so I wouldn't worry too much about it. I'm going to cut that and lift the foot. Now you can see, can you see here the way that we're doing, doing this? Let me take it over here.
so is that on now oh three a four that's why it's wrong so did i press a three for me to show you how i was drawing it because if i didn't then this is this is all you know not done properly right are we on the right one now now because my edge line is here i'm not i don't need to bring my um stitch through now at home i would suggest you go slightly slower you'll get a better stitch but um i don't want to be here keeping you for too long what do you mean there's no line okay so has the camera worked are we on the four screen is frozen oh there's nothing i can do about that i'm afraid i will have to keep showing you i'll have to keep showing you as i go all right okay so we're going along here So, um, so I'm just sewing to the edge of my line. Right there. And then because I've gone over my line, I can sew along here until I get to my next bit and continue get pictures of a man what man is it because my hair's up oh i just remembered where i put the pencil as well it's in my hair <laughs> Duh. so we're um just sewing on the lines that we've drawn Saw me drawing that's okay as long as we got the drawing in that's good so we're going along here so it seems strange to be back to normal letters coming up which was lovely um there's some really beautiful ideas coming out i know they're all the same letters but um i'm loving how all the fabrics are so different I'm going along here. i did up the stitch a bit so that i could um go a little bit can you hear it piercing through? Right, I've gone past the line. So, here. Going up. We're nearly finished on the diagonals. So my Dave is 60 on um on wednesday so i've got the day off and we're in and are in we're gonna have some people around for uh you know pe people i mean family and those that we consider family are coming around for um sausage egg and chips that's what he wants sausage egg beans and chips so i've bought the world's largest amount of sausages so i hope people are coming hungry um and um we're going to go out for breakfast as well we're going to the grazing shed 
because the grazing shed will uh, do um, waffles. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and then we're considering whether we um, considering whether we uh, go to see Top Gun because we went. Oh, I think it was one of the first. One of the first films that we went to see together was the first Top Gun. So that would be quite good. It never gives me enough. There we go. So I've put the, um, the needle in and pulled up the thread. Now I'm sure Sarah's done you um, done lessons on that before. How to pull up the thread. So going, uh, just doing these diagonals into the corners. Okay. Like that. So nearly done. What time is it? See, we've been going half an hour and I've been talking and faffing. So we're half an hour in and we've We've pretty much covered quite a lot of it, haven't we? So it's a, it is a very quick make. Where's the, I think the hardest bit is getting this cotton up. There we go. So put the needle back down like that. So I know some of you have already bought this Luminex. So I don't know whether you've already made your uh, ironing covers. It was part of the, it was um, originally the pattern for the subscription box. So I know some of you have made it from that. So last line of this type of stitching. So one down and up, let's pull that up, there we go, and back down, there we go, so last line, there we go. so did you get the newsletter that Sean sent out? If you haven't joined up for our newsletter, then um, go to the website. We're on the um, it's at the web on the website that you sign up. Right. So I've got I've left my threads here. Now I'll what I'll do is I'll get a easy thread needle. Um, I don't know whether Sarah's got any. There's none there that I can see. Um, with the easy thread needle, it it the the eye sort of does that, and you pull the thread down through the eye, through the top of the eye, rather than having to um, uh, thread it, post it through the eye of the needle. So um, that's uh, it, it's really good. I use it a lot in the quilting thing. Right. So number three is the top so it's a lovely newsletter I, I love reading it because um, Sean sends it to us first to proofread I love reading it I always think oh we do live in interesting lives okay so I I can see the line where I'm going to cut so I'm going to cut that first okay um, it looks a bit squiffy on here, but I'm going to go down and just trim it up to the 18 by 15. Okay. So there we go. Very satisfying stuff, this. It makes good noises when you're cutting it and sewing it. It's taken me five years to find it it helps when you know what it's called surprisingly so we're going up here 
So I've just now tuned it to the size that I want it. Okay. And there we have it. Now, you're going to measure three inches up these di corner diagonals. Okay. So we're going to go up three inches. So one, two, three. Put that on there. Go up one of your lines, up the diagonals, and we're going to draw a line like that. Now, it seems a really big line, but I did cut it smaller to begin with and found that it didn't sit where I wanted it to sit. Now, a lot of them, when you look on um, uh, Pinterest and everything, you see a lot of them like overlap and I didn't want that I wanted them to butt up do you love that word butt up so we're now going to trim off our corners okay and hope that you've cut it right measured it right okay we're going to come up here that up this one like that uh, so imagine three you'd have three different um you can make three out of the half a meter of this stuff imagine giving these to your um quilting friends so you can you see where we followed the lines you can see what i mean about if you take it nice and steady you get a nice even stitch if you go faster you get this tiny little stitch which is no good for man or beast but you're not going to see it right i'm now going to show you how we cut um the binding if i can find oh i sat on it look it was all nicely ironed. <laughs> I've sat on it. So we're going to have to iron that again. I've got, obviously got a wrinkly bum. It's a bit like, um, oh, was it Mr. Blobby lived at Wrinkly Bottom? Was it Mr. Blobby that lived at Wrinkly Bottom? showing my age again so we're doing a quick iron it went lovely the first time but i think the iron's not quite warmed up yet okay so this is all pristinely ironed okay and what we're going to do is we're going to make it into a square so by lining up this bottom edge with this side edge here like that at a diagonal like that this then makes this 45 degrees okay and it means that we can then trim it off at our two and a half I think we use two and a half not having the pattern. It might be two, but I think we'll do it at two and a half. So you do that and you end up. Oh no. You gotta you've gotta trim the little bit off first and then the two and a half. You dingba. Okay, so what you want to do is where the fold is, you want to be able to just take off the barest amount on the fold like that which then gives you two rectangles which when you cut it you get the bias now we think two was enough but I can't remember for definite so I'm going to take my biggest piece and I'm going to cut off another two and a half like that. It's two and a half. Like 
Yeah. Two and a half. So I have these. And I think that is loads. Now your handles. Um, your handles don't have to be very long. I should have brought in a, 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 um, a made one over so that I could show you. The handles don't need to be very long because it's not like you're going to throw it over your shoulder when you're walking anywhere. So you need, it needs to be four inches. I think that's what the measurement was. Four inches. So we're going to go up here and it was four by eight, four by ten. So just go with whatever you can cut off and you're left with scraps. Okay, so we put the scraps to one side over there. And for these, you are going to, for the straps, we're going to iron them off. like this and then we're going to fold them in half like that open them back out and then iron that crease in like that Willard Wiggins latest piece I need to have a look at that Have a look at that. I did have a look at the nudie knits, which was pretty cool, Lynn. Um, I had a look at those and the and the piece that you put up. That looked really cool. Uh, your son decided to do an afternoon tea, and you ended up with all the baking, Kate. That's um, that's a bit mean. However. You only live down the road. Where's my cake? My next door neighbour has been making cake. And she drops it into me. And she makes this amazing cake. I get a text. Meet me at the back. And I get a piece of cake over the wall. It's lush. So, that's our handles. And what you need to do then is top stitch up one side and down the other okay so that would make your handles so I could do that like that now these are on the bias so they have to be sewn around now if we square them off so it's easier for you to see okay and these have to be sewn at the angle okay where's it gone so these you have to put them at right angle now i'm using a plane um and you don't get a right or wrong side so it it has merits and it's um also uh troublesome if you're doing a long line of uh bias so we're now going to sew from this top edge here all the way down to this bottom edge and you want to sew from the inside top corner to the outside bottom corner right that's it anything that you do if I can have a big guest here so the easiest way to do it is to make a mark now if it's not exact I'm not going to worry about it too much okay so we're going to trim this off here like this one here like that and we're going to put these together as well so you need to work out that's going to go that way so that's the right side so you want to put them right sides together what have I cut? Okay, oh, let's cut that one. Like that. Okay, 
when you want to put them right sides together. Like I say, you're not going to be able to tell on this. And then we'll pin that there. And then we're going to go from top corner to bottom corner like that. And then we're going to sew on that corner, uh, on that line. So we're going to sew on the line. Probably be easier if you put it. Yeah, it's dead on. Look at that. Maybe put it slightly over so you can see the corner. So back over here. Back over here. They ate it all and took some home. Wow. I don't know why I haven't got you all. Um, uh, trained now that the first slice needs to be put to one side for Sarah Jane okay so that's one and this one two like that so that's your binding okay And really, you know what binding, binding is by now. We've probably done enough. Um, one o'clocks. Have I got it right? I have, yes. So we're just going to chop off our seam allowance there on the dog ears. And then we're going to put this seam allowance. Here. There we go. I'm hungry. Don't find anybody else. I'm really hungry now. It's getting way past my lunch time. See, there's all that talk of waffles. I don't know. Is is the grazing shed just a um, a Welsh thing? Um, I know they source local local bits. So, with this binding, we're just going to um, iron it in half, okay, along with the long length. I know it's bias, but it makes it a lot easier to put on. I mean, it can be done with straight. Um, it can be done with the um, a straight binding but those corners are much easier i found having done it both ways okay and the one here look at this and then the wrong here okay this is not being done very well but yeah, get the idea. See, I thought about it in bed last night. Must remember to pick up my little iron. Now I have tested this. I've um this blue stuff. Um, I've tested it by putting my iron on and leaving it till it got hot, then turning it off and putting it straight onto the Luminex and it um it held it was fine okay so where are we are we still on number three so to fold this you're going to fold it up and then it's going to come across like that okay so that's where it's gonna that's how it's going to come together See what I mean? It doesn't overlap. It just stays there. It's lovely. Okay. So when you're before you put your binding on, you need to work out where it's going to do up. And you're going to want on this side here, you're going to want your elastic. Okay. So you want your elastic. And you don't need very much. You just need about that okay 
So what you do, what you do, Malcolm, is you're going to work out where it's going to go. And then you are going to have that in place like that. Okay. Maybe I should have used the white one so that you could see it. And we're going to put that underneath so that you can base that in place there or pop it in as you're doing the binding. Okay. Now we're going to, you would do that on both sides. And then once it's all finished sewing, you're going to pop the a button on this side. You'll work out where it is. The handles... You want to put on the fabric side these would have been top stitched okay um, so that they're all staying together and you want to put them on or around that um, diagonal coming up into that that fold okay because when they fold fold up you're going to fold and you want that to not be in the way of your fold like that so you want it and all you're doing is is doing it so that you can carry it okay now i would put my um my binding I would start my binding on the Luminex side and then once you've stitched it you're going to want to pull it over to the other side right so if we start stitching I can't show you as I go around the corner that's the problem um, is this still frozen is this one still frozen I don't know whether you can how to turn it on there isn't a there isn't a thing on there is it still frozen everybody I'm assuming it is the man is back okay We'll stick with uh, that one there then. What we're going to do is you start it leaving a tail, okay? Um, I would put a back stitch in there. Uh, where am I? Like that. Put a back stitch in there and then so When you get to the corner, because we're using bias, you can pull that around the corner. And I would then sew on the curve. You don't want to pull it too tight, but you want the, you can put some traction on it. Okay. you then okay so so I've come round to the corner can you see now what I I did was I then rounded that corner off where I'd sewn and this will then fold over. This will then fold over and you would hand stitch it on this side. Okay. Now I've used edge of foot 
probably quarter of an inch is fine. And you just then go into all the way round, you're going to hand stitch it. Okay, like I say, I've used edge of foot, quarter of an inch would probably fit it better. All right, so you'll have had your handles here and you would just sew those in as you're going round. I would base them first uh, less than you know like a, an eighth of an inch and then you will then base them base them there and then sew them in as you're going round and it would if you put the binding on this outside it's going to be a devil of a thing to sew through this so I would uh, put the binding on first on the loom next side and then roll it over rolling 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 like that all the way around and then you have an iron caddy now that took me oh this is taking an hour but you could knock out all three in an afternoon really um i hope that's made some sort of sense to people if there's any questions you just need to let me know and I will uh, try and answer any other questions. Right, Sarah's back tomorrow. Um, I think she's doing a clutch. Is she doing a clutch bag? I think, um, or something. And then block of the week. And then I'm back with a um, woven basket. So um, that will be. That will be the week gone already. And then we're off to Tenerife for the weekend. And I'm very excited. I can't wait to feel the heat of the sun. So that's it. That's me done. That's another one that I've got half finished now for um to put in my half finished box of things to do. But uh, I've got all the bits with it at least. And it won't take two minutes to finish it off. So um, I might do that and then it will go on the website. So if you like this fabric, it'll be on there. Thank you very much, everybody. I will see you Thursday. OK, um, we're back to normal now, so I'll see you Thursday. Um, I'm going to move that iron before I burn myself. Like that, because that's just typical of me. I would burn myself and have a beautiful blister or something. I will see you Thursday. Take care, everyone. Bye.